issued a report in 2015 called the Russian Navy a Historic Transition. And uh, again, public document. And it uh, states here that submarines are the capital ships of the Russian Navy. This is dictated by Russia's geography. Constrained direct access to major ocean areas everywhere but in the Pacific makes surface ship operations vulnerable to potential enemy action. The inherent covert nature of submarines enhances their survivability, whether operating locally or when transiting into more open sea areas. And then it goes on to quote Admiral Cherkov of the Navy stating that the nuclear submarine fleet is the priority of the Navy's shipbuilding program. Again, one of your predecessors, uh, Admiral Stavridis, testified here a couple of years ago and um, kind of caught people's attention by stating that the uh, submarine activity is roughly about 70% of what it was during the, the Cold War era. And he knows what he's talking about because he sort of was there during a lot of that. And uh, you mentioned in your, your opening remarks about the fact that anti-submarine activities is now um, an, you know kind of a restart in terms of uh, our uh, forces as well as uh, the, the region. I realize some of this is classified and you talked about it a little bit yesterday, but I think it's important still to talk, j create at least some uh, picture in terms of what you're uh, dealing with and, and what you're seeing. And I was wondering if you could comment a little more. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, Admiral Stavridis noted that he gave an estimate of what it was in just this last year, since the last time I testified here. We've seen uh, activity um, in the Russian Navy, and particularly uh, undersea, and their submarine activity um, that, that uh, we haven't seen since the 80s. So the level of activity is, is up yet again. And as you know, they're producing uh, maritime uh, enhancements to existing ships and uh, new submarine um, that, is, uh, that is definitely more modern and uh, more challenging. While we remain dominant undersea, we've got to continue our investment uh, as the Navy has laid out in order to uh, maintain that dominance, just given their modernization and their increased uh, activity uh, with their forces. And as far as, you know, working with, uh, again, some of our allies in the region, um, again, this is something that, again, is sort of a restart, as I mentioned. Yes, sir, it's important. Um, you know, it, most of the allies in the United States doesn't have the same uh, capacity that it had during the Cold War. When we were used to doing this together, particularly anti-submarine warfare, maritime operations. So we're all rebuilding our capacities. We're improving our capacities to meet the, you know, the uh, challenges we have in this new environment and Russia's modernization. Um, together, we can handle this. We've, we've proven that in this past year. Uh, but it does take all of us working together. And the other thing I would mention, it takes a mix of the forces, uh, particularly anti-submarine warfare. You're talking air, surface, subsurface, sensors. It's a mix that allows us, along with our allies and their capabilities, to be successful. Thank you. Um, last year's NDAA, uh, we